You are a human, so act like one. We have all heard such expressions. It invites one to act well, good, right, or morally if you like the term. The idea is that you should act such and such since you are a human. There would be no expectation if you were not a human. Let us assume that there is nothing wrong with this. Human beings should act in a certain way. But is it possible that such expressions somehow indirectly mislead us about some moral issues, such as environmental ethics? Here's a possible misunderstanding. One might conclude that only humans can be moral. You do not tell a cat to behave. Well, you don't say so seriously and in the same way that you say so to a human person. People are who we expect to act in a certain way. We get angry at them and sometimes we are justified in doing so. And we might criticize or blame them. People can be accountable for what they do. If a dog does something wrong in a public place, the owner might be to blame. Blaming is at least somehow different in case of other animals. Perhaps a dog has such a personality that it is not suitable for having him in a small apartment. What kind of a dog is suitable for that anyway? But it is not that the dog is morally corrupt or morally criticizable. Technically, humans can be moral agents, not other animals. So far sounds natural. But what if someone takes this further, saying that since only humans can be moral or immoral, then morality is merely a matter of human beings. Moral issues merely concern people. Therefore, all these animal right discussions and ethical considerations about treating animals and our duties to respect the environment is a mere mistake. Ethics is for and about humans. End of discussion. Only humans are moral agents. Therefore, we only have duties toward them. If one is not an agent and does not have duties toward us, then we do not have duties toward him. Does this idea make sense? Let us begin with the application of this idea in the context of human beings. It seems that even aside from moral issues about other animals and the environment, it is problematic to equate moral agents with those who moral agents have to care about. Think of those human beings who lack the capabilities required for being a moral agent. That is, if we apply this to the case of newborns, severely mentally disabled, and some other cases, the result would be, well, horrible. There are human beings who are not considered to be moral agents, do not have responsibilities and are not accountable for what they do. That is, if they do anything at all. However, we cannot conclude that we do not have any sort of duties towards them. At least, it makes sense to ask these questions and think about them. Do we have duties toward those who are in coma? Does it morally matter how we treat those who have severe amnesia? At the moment, what's important is that these questions are not absurd. Even if we give a negative answer, we have already accepted that the sheer fact that those people are not agents does not make them morally irrelevant. That is, we don't ask such questions about sands or stones. They don't matter, morally speaking. All this suggests that there are at least some cases where someone doesn't have duties toward us, but we are responsible towards them. The moral of the story is that even if other animals are not moral agents, this doesn't mean that discussing animal rights or environmental ethics in general is just a mistake. A distinction would help to clarify this point. First, we can ask who is a moral agent? What does it take to have duties or to be accountable? For example, what is it that we don't take newborns or some cases of severely mentally disabled people accountable for their actions? You might think of both physical and mental capabilities. Be that as it may, this question about moral agency need to be distinguished from the other question. Who is a moral patient? A moral patient is the one who the moral agent should care about. One whose interests matter morally. A person who for whatever reason is not a moral agent still may be a moral patient. That is, moral agents need to consider their interests when thinking about what course of action should be taken. There are different theories about who counts as a moral patient. For example, some argue that to be a moral patient you should belong to a specific species. For example, human beings. A real anthropocentric view, right? Others maintain that to be a moral patient, you have to have some mental abilities, such as reasoning, 
desiring or else. Yet others defend the view that being capable of suffering is all it takes to be a moral patient. Still, another view is that the circle of moral patience must be broad enough to include not only all lives, but even roads or mountains, just as an example. As it is clear, depending on which theory is plausible, the circle of moral patience becomes bigger or smaller. What theory about moral patience is the preferred one? What is the criteria of being a moral patient? We don't get into it here. That's a question worthy of separate discussions. For now, what is important is to have the distinction between moral agents and moral patients in mind. Sometimes at the heart of discussions about animal rights or environmental ethics, the debate suffers a confusion between moral agents and moral patients. However, whether some human beings or some other animals are or are not moral agents doesn't determine whether they are moral patients. Humans have to act as humans have to but not only towards humans or those who can act human.